You know what, Tony? Cows are very important to small shamba farmers. They give us meat, they give us milk. They are priceless. And if you want the best from your cattle, you need expert advice. And that's what you'll get with Shamba Shepherd. Meet George and his wife Rose. They have four grown up children who've all left home. They've lived on this shamba in Mudiga for over 16 years. Working hard together, they grow a variety of crops, but their main income depends on their cows, which are zero grazed. In fact, only the day before we arrived, one of their cows gave birth to a baby calf called Gloria. Now, that's the good news. But the bad news is that George and Rose are suffering all sorts of problems and are desperately in need of some expert advice. So we pitched up and got down to business. George and Rose, we are, we are very happy to be here in your farm. You know, we like it. You know, we like things that we have seen so far. Yeah. yeah you, you, you're trying to do a good job. Okay, good. So now, what are the main problems that you face in your farm? Our main problems which we are facing is just cattle, how uh -huh. to feed them, health, uh -huh. and uh -huh. shrubs. So your cattle are weak? Yeah. They do not produce enough milk for you? Yeah, they don't produce enough milk for us. So I think we can get you an expert for that. Okay, it will be very good. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, what about your problems? My problems are too many. <laughs> really? Because yeah. right, it's another problem. Mm -hmm. Because we use paraffin, and it, it is very costly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The light is very good if we mm -hmm. get it. Because mm -hmm. now you see, when you hear something at mm -hmm. night, yes. now you walk in the dark. But if you have the light, yeah. you just switch it on, then and you, you will see, and you see what, what is, is going, going on. on. Yeah, somebody yeah. might might be. God forbid stealing your cow. Yeah, mm. maybe. Uh, <laughs> some time. Come out with the light and you'll take yeah. and you see it. Yes. Them say, yeah. promise me that he will build a, a sitting room for me, but he's unable to do it because of financial problems. Uh, how long mm. ago was that? It was 15 years ago. 15? 15. 15 years ago. George, George, George. George. We, need, we need to talk. <laughs> we need to talk. If we that's learn that's how to manage our us, uh, how to grow shrubs yes. and our kitchen garden to uh, add more product so that we can take it to the market. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. That's good. And then when you get enough from all that, you can be able to finish the sitting room. Yeah, yes. I'll finish for my wife because yeah. I have promised her. Good, good. Yeah. Now let's go and see the farm. They suddenly could do with some help, don't you think, Naomi? Absolutely. So let's start right away and take a look at the zero grazed cows. And to make sure George and Rose get the very best, we invited John Mwangi, an animal production specialist from Coopers, to join us. Mom, yes. how many cows do you have? I have only one cow. One cow? A heifer. A heifer? And a two days calf. Oh, wow, the two days. Yes. That's a great blessing. You are doing good, good, huh? but you know what? No. You can do better and better and better. Today we are going to discuss about three main issues we are going to have in your farm. Eh? Okay. One, you are going to discuss about the zero grazing unit. Yes. Secondly, you are going to discuss about the health of our heads of cattle. Yes. And after that, you are going to discuss about the feeding of those cows. Okay, Very good. good. Judge and Luz, eh? yes. this trough, eh? yeah. you see that it is moving all the way from here to the fire. Eh? Yeah. It's supposed to have three segments. Okay. One, you're supposed to have a place for mineral supplements. Uh -huh. You're supposed to have something for feed. Uh -huh. And at the far end, we have something for water. Loose, huh? Yes. You see this roof? It is sloping on that side. Uh -huh. So you can imagine a lot of the water is moving, is going to the fire. Eh? Yeah. It's not being conserved. Yeah. It's just flowing to the cloud, and that one even can solve our sleeping places of our heads of cattle. Eh? Oh, yes. You're going to construct this roof yes. to be sloping on this way, yes. such that the water from the rain, yes. it is going to come this way, and then at the, at the floor, you're going to have a trench yeah. that is going to make to move our waters and the slurry and everything to the shaba. You see our calf? Yes. It should be in a position that 
When you're milking up your cow, yes. the cow is seeing the calf. Uh -huh. And the calf is seeing the cow. When you're milking, it is going to increase the milk because it is thinking that you're milking the milk to give it to the calf. To the calf. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's, nice. that's why you should always put the cow and the calf, mm -hmm. the calf pen near to the milk para, yeah. so that you can be in a position to get good milk. Huh? That's nice. Now, John, yeah. thank you very much for your advice. We have learned a lot of knowledge from you. Yeah. I thank you very much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let us welcome the ship up team to come and do the, all the construction of the cow shed yes. and the zero grazing unit yes. as we discuss much more about the health of our cows. Eh? Okay. So let's go this way. Thank you. Thank you. So bring on Handy Mwangi and his army of workers. Oh, they can't wait to get their hands on this cow shed. And here he comes now. And it's time to lead the livestock away to makeshift pens until the new zero grazing cattle shed is complete. Zero grazed cows needs lots of fodder, such as napier grass, which can be grown easily on the shamba. But it has to be planted correctly to get the best results. And George and Rose's napier grass is not looking good. So while the cows settle down, we've called in Francis Givonje, a soil specialist from IFDC, to advise them on how to improve their crop. The spacing is not uh, correct. Okay. There are so many gaps mm -hmm. within the farm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we need to show you proper spacing. Another way to improve uh, your napier grass yes. is to keep it clean mm -hmm. by removing these weeds. Okay. Yeah, and we also need to be applying some fertilizer and manure. Okay. Yeah, so I want us to make uh, some holes yeah. so that we can uh, plant the napier grass. Okay. Yeah. The holes should be 30 centimeters deep and half a meter from one another. And each row should also be about half a meter apart. Put in manure, then add some fertilizer. And mix the two together. Plant the cane at least two nodes deep, leaving at least one node above the ground, and firm it in. You can also plant napier splits, which grow quicker, and this is how you prepare them. Trim most of the green leaves from the top, then plant it the same way as the cane, using a mix of manure and fertilizer. And there's no need to water. The napier grass should be ready to cut in two to three months time. Make sure all your land is used. Plant up empty spaces with either canes or splits and don't forget to chop the napier grass into small pieces before you feed to the cow as it aids with digestion. If you already grown napier grass on your shamba, it's worth following Francis' expert advice and plant it with these new methods in mind. And remember that when you are cutting your napier grass, to leave a short stump above the ground several inches long, as this will encourage the grass to grow back many fresh stems all the more for your zero grace cows. Meanwhile, Mwangi's army is making an advance on the new cattle pen. They've ripped off the badly slanting roof, started rebuilding the calf and making pens, and the new concrete floor is underway. Those cows will think they have checked into a smart hotel. A magnificent new cattle shed needs to house healthy and well-fed livestock. It makes good business sense all around. So while the work continues, our animal specialist John shows George and Rose how to test for and prevent mastitis. Mastitis is a disease that inhibits or attacks our udder. Okay. And you know when you see the value of this cow, yeah. half of it is on the udder. Yeah. Mastitis is a disinfectant that is used to disinfect our water mm -hmm. against the microorganisms of mastitis. Okay. So what you do, you measure at least two of these, eh? yeah. and you put it on the water. Mm -hmm. So 
Then you come and wash your udder. Yeah. Yeah. Then, the remainder of the water, mm -hmm. you sprinkle where the bacteria of mastitis can highly spread from. Eh? Okay. Yeah. Now, before you milk, eh? this is a milk instance. Eh? Yeah. After that, each and every teat, you're supposed to test for mastitis. Eh? Yeah. You are supposed to have a strip cup for testing for mastitis, yeah. but on this time loud, eh, yeah. you are going to use our hands. Mm -hmm. What you are going to do, each and every teeth, yeah. you look upon, you see, it's supposed to be white, yeah. it's not supposed to have any solid, eh? yeah. so that is teeth one. Eh? Yeah. Continue to test the remaining three teeth for solids in the milk. If your cow gives clear milk from all the four teeth, then there is no infection in the udder. Now that you have seen that our cows are good, yes. we do what we call milking. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Always milk the cow until the udder is empty, as it helps prevent mastitis. A teat dip is a handy implement that helps prevent the reoccurrence of mastitis. You see here, mm -hmm. like this, eh? yeah. John uses it to cleanse all four teats. As our experts have said, good napier grass is a mainstay of a cow's diet. But sometimes this diet could do with a boost. So before John leaves the shamba, he introduces George and Rose to some important supplementary feeds which will ensure their cows attain tip-top condition. It is not as costly as you might think to practice zero grazing successfully. A cattle shed can be made over without too much outlay using materials found on the shamba. And to keep a herd well fed and healthy will pay good dividends in the long run with a huge increase in your milk supply and of a much better quality. Put simply, more income and a greater profit. Water is the lifeblood of any shamba. It is crucial for the cows as well as the crops. And if it is scarce, or not harvested well. There will always be difficulties as Rose knows only too well. Hello Rose, hello to you. What are you doing? I'm collecting water for my cow. Is it enough? It is not enough. Well, I noticed that uh, your guttering is poor and you don't even have gutters at the back there. They are too small. Uh -huh. And you know you waste a lot of water during the rainy season. Of course. Is the water insufficient for your cows? It is not sufficient. Uh -huh. Yes. And how else do you use the water? I try to, to do kitchen garden. Kitchen garden? Yes. And also for your cows? Yes. I don't think this can be enough at all. No, no. It no, can't. Okay. Yeah, so with proper guttering, and proper storage, I'm sure everything will be okay. Okay, welcome. You'll do something. Keep, keep going. Okay, thanks. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Down with the old and up with the new. Wangi's army goes on the attack. We leave him to carry on the good work. And as the day drowns to a close, it's time for us to take stock. They're still hammering away. I think that cattle shed is going to look like a castle. <laughs> well, nothing's too good for that baby heifer. Lots to learn today about zero grazing. Well, that's made easy thanks to our experts from Shamba, Shamba Shepherd. Coming up, what can George do about his poor crops? And will our farmers see the light? The sun shines on the shamba where George and Rose have lived and worked for 16 years. But recently, they have experienced a whole load of problems and turned to us for some expert advice. We are already working on their cow shed to make it a better place for the heifer and her new calf. And have advised them on making sure their cows are well fed and healthy. To help Rose irrigate her crops, we are constructing new gutters and downpipes to harvest as much rainwater as possible. But there's still more shipping up to do. Better get a move on. George and Rose grow many different crops on their shamba and make some extra cash by selling the surplus in the local market. <laughs> That's a year. 
Mpatia mia mbili. Mzee hii. Mimi naona ni kama ni mbaya. Unaona? Aidha. Aidha tena. Na hii kutishia. Hii ni route nayo. Hiyo route nayo na hii. But unfortunately not all their crops are thriving. So we've called upon Julius Nyambicha, an agribusiness specialist from ARM, to see what they could be doing wrong. Uh, the first thing that you have to do as a farmer, oh, when yes. you want to plant spinach and when you want a good yield, for yield from spinach, mm -hmm. is to have your spacing right. Okay. Uh, the correct spacing for spinach is one foot by yeah. a third of a foot. Okay. That okay. is very important. Once you've done that, you make your holes, don't make them too deep, don't no. make them too shallow. The next thing that you have to do is to make sure that you provide nutrients for your spinach plant. Oh, yes. And the nutrients are provided through fertilizer or through manure. Mm -hmm. As an expert, I would want to advise you to use both manure and also you use uh, inorganic fertilizer like the fertilizer that you buy from the shops, from the agrovets. Okay. This is important because each has a very specific function. Like the manure is very good in holding the water. Uh, so when it rains, that water has to be retained there for the good use of the plant. In organic fertilizers, this has nutrients which are measured uh, for different crops and also for different soils. Okay. It's not wise for you as a farmer to go and pick any fertilizer and use it on any crop. Now, George and Rose, yes. this fertilizer is known as Mavuno fertilizer. Oh, okay. yes. Mavuno fertilizer, Mavuno is just the brand name. But mm -hmm. what we are interested in fertilizer is not the name. We are interested in the nutrients which are in this fertilizer. If you look at this fertilizer, it has got nitrogen 20%, it has phosphorus 10%, it has potassium 18%, it also has about 5.5% of calcium oxide, uh, which is basically lime that takes care of your soil acidity. This is the most important thing that you have to look at as a farmer when you want to buy fertilizer. So, Ross and George, yes. one other thing that you have to look at in the fertilizer is the size of the fertilizer. I can see you're small-scale farmers. Mm -hmm. You don't do a lot of vegetables. It's good and it's also prudent for you to buy a fertilizer that can you be able to use at that particular time and finish it. If you open the fertilizer, it loses most of the nutrients. Julius, how does one packet of fertilizer cost? Is it cost three? This one packet of fertilizer is one kilo mm. and it's costing roughly 70 Kenya shillings. Mm. That is very cheap for a farmer who is wanting to do farming as a business. And I want to tell you, many farmers such as you complain about fertilizer that it costs money. Yes, it costs money, mm. but for you to get a good yield that you can be able to sell and get money, you have to use fertilizer. So farming is done as a business. The first thing that a farmer should do when uh, planting vegetables, especially spinach, is to prepare the land. Prepare the land well, and it's best done when it's still dry, when it's still not raining. Yeah, the second thing is to prepare the holes. The holes are um, 10 centimeters apart and 30 centimeters between the rows. Once this is done, then the farmer should bring the manure and mix it well with the soil. After that, the farmer should bring the fertilizer, which is usually a bottle top, mix it well with the mixture of the soil and the manure. After that, the farmer now plants the spinach, and after the planting, the spinach should be covered well and the soil farmed around the spinach, and then water the plant, because it is, it's important to water this plant so that it can have that water and the strength before it rains, if it's going to rain. And if it's under irrigation, then the first thing that the farmer should do is to water the planted spinach. If you're a small farmer, as Julia said, you're better off buying small packets of fertilizer to help your crops grow well. Small packets are cheap and well worth it to get the results you're looking for. And in the end, you could reap in terms of making a profit far more than you sowed. So, if George and Lucy plant their spinach with the recommended spacing and apply the correct type and amount of fertilizer mixed with manure, then they will significantly increase their yield and command a better price at the market. So, in a nutshell, the more fertilizer you use, you will have more yields from your farming activities, and then you will have more money. When you sell that, those yields will have more money in your pocket, you'll be healthier, you'd have eaten well, and you'll be more relaxed, stress-free life.
Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much. That's a very good lesson. <laughs> But let's see how that cow shed and those gutters are coming along under Mongi's command. At ease, Mwangi, at ease. As we know, George and Rose are keen to grow bigger and better crops in their nursery garden. And many of our experts have recommended compost when planting. The good thing being, it costs next to nothing to make. So to tell George about the benefits of making a compost heap on the shamba and how to construct one, we leave him in the expert hands of soil scientist Francis Shivonje from IFDC. Compost is uh, another form of uh, farmyard manure that is very important in adding uh, nutrients to your farm. The goodness with compost is that you can use locally available material, the waste uh, from uh, plants, uh, the waste from the kitchen and also the manure from uh, the cow dung to make compost. So, what's the best way of constructing a compost heap? First, dig a pit in a shady place on the chamber. One foot down and about four to five feet wide. Put a layer of dry plant material at the bottom of the pit. Then a layer of wet green leaves. Cover that with some cow dung, which works very well with ash from the jiko. Cover with soil. And sprinkle with water. Repeat this layering process until the pit is full and the compost rises to the height of about two feet, or even higher if it is contained within wooden supports. Cover with grass or polythene, and to be ready to use in about six weeks time. To test its progress, you can dig a stick into the center of the compost and feel how warm it is. And the great thing is, it can be used anywhere on the shamba and costs nothing at all. How good is that? You no, know, George, now everything is up to you. You know, if you do what he has instructed you to do, your farm will grow strength to strength. And finally, you can sit back and uh, finish that sitting room. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'll finish it huh? and I'm going to succeed. You better finish it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. George and Rose have learned so much from the experts on how to shape up their chamber. And it's great to see them putting it all into practice. But there's one thing I really think we should help them, especially with the new calf. And that's how solar power can be a huge asset. Delight design and manufacture a number of excellent and affordable solar lamps. Paul Jiguna, their solar power manager, comes to see what might suit Rose and George best. So Rose, is light important for you on this chamber? Yes, it is very important. Okay, what do you use light for? I use it in the kitchen when cooking, Okay. in the house, and walking aloud in my compound to see how the cows are. So what kind of fuel do you use now for light? Right now, I'm using paraffin. Okay. Why not electricity? We have been thinking about electricity, but due to the cost, we haven't installed one. Okay. Yeah. And about how much money do you spend on paraffin? Within three days, we use 30 shillings, so that is 120 shillings per week. Okay. Yeah. That's so about 500 a month. Yeah, 500 a month. Okay. Yeah. And that is too costly because we can use that money if we have got another solution. Have you ever thought about using solar? We have been thinking about it, but we haven't come to a solution. You know, solar energy is fantastic because it's free. Yeah. You know, the power energy from the sun, you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. Um, it's clean and, you know, there's, there's very many benefits. Yeah. And I come from a company called D-Light, okay. where we deal in solar lighting solutions. Okay. I think I have the perfect solution for you. Okay. Let's see what you think about it. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, this is a solar lantern, mm -hmm. which is charged for free using energy from the sun. Okay. It comes together with this solar panel and it's very easy to use. All you need to do is put this out in the sun mm -hmm. during the day. Okay. Plug it in here. Oh, yes. And it starts charging. Yeah. And you leave it out in the sun all day. Yeah. At night, you just take this out and your light will be charged and you use it. Okay. It's very easy to use as well. Mm. You only one button to switch it on. Nice. And it has four different settings of brightness oh, depending yeah. on what you need to do. The other interesting thing about this lantern uh -huh. is that from the same place where you charge it, yes. you can actually charge your phone, which is also very simple. You just place this jack in the same hole yeah. where you place the panel. Let me show you on your phone. You just plug it in there yes. and immediately starts charging. Yeah. So I'll leave this with you yes. and see how you'll get on with it. Okay. Thanks a lot. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It will be very, very help to us. Thank you. That light is going to be such a help at night when there's livestock to be checked. Another thing which is going to make life on the Shamba a little easier is rainwater on tap. I think it's time for the opening of the Great Water Harvesting Ceremony. So Rose, with easy access to water, takes the opportunity to tend her crops. And as the last piece of the wood is put in place, Mwangi's army retires the barracks. So George, this is a moment of the truth, yeah? yeah? I think this is a moment you have been waiting for. Oh, yes. Okay. Good. Now I want you to see your new Cut a shed. What do you think? Marvelous. Very good. It's beautiful. Wonderful. Better than it was before. Oh yes. Good. As you can see, there there is a feeding and water troughs. Yeah. New nice. ones. Nice. There is a new calf pen right there. Yeah. A new milk parlor. Oh yes. There is cement on the floor. Ah, and there's a trench nice. down there where the slurry can ah, all go down good. there. Good, good, right? Good. Inside the stalls you can see the straw. Yeah. The cows can sleep comfortably. Yeah. Like, they're in a, like they're in a hotel, you yeah. know, ordering yeah. breakfast and all That's that. Good. You can see the roof is slanting a bit. So oh. when it rains heavy. Oh, it nice. Yeah, when it rains heavy, nice. all the slurry will be washed oh. down to the floor. Um, right there. And then you can see they are a bit smaller now. Yeah. So the cow cannot, before. Yeah, the cow cannot keep turning around, keep them turning around, right? You are happy. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Good, let's move it. Let's move in the cows. Let's move them in and see how they feel. Maybe they'll be able to talk to the yeah. let's go get them, okay? okay. So Naomi, it's time we left this shamba. We've really helped George and Rose, haven't we? Yes, we've advised them about uh, zero grazing, planting, fertilizer, uh, compost, and even about rainwater. Wow, the list is long, but good. And this is all thanks to Shamba Shepherd. But just one last thing, don't the solar power lamps work well? 